No, I'm not talking about a new virus or some other kind of infectious disease wiping out half the planet like the TV show The Last of Us. I'm talking about something that is much slower and invisible to most people's eyes anyway. Most people know that heart disease is the number one killer and two thirds of Americans are overweight or obese. Now when it comes to the biggest health fears of most adults in America, it's cancer and rightfully so. But we act as though heart disease, obesity, cancer, hypertension, and other illnesses are all unrelated. But with only a few exceptions, they're all closely related. All of them are driven by something called insulin resistance. Now, insulin resistance is the core problem of America's health crisis. 90% of Americans have poor metabolic health, or at least less than ideal, whether they realize it or not. In other words, 9 out of 10 Americans have some degree of insulin resistance. And just because you're thin doesn't mean that you're off the hook because thin people can be metabolically unhealthy. Only 10% of people don't have any insulin resistance. The rest of us have some degree of insulin resistance, which could be in the form of prediabetes or even worse, type 2 diabetes. And at the worst worst, it's type 2 diabetes who require insulin. Now we're seeing higher and higher rates of obesity and type 2 diabetes and cancer, but our genes haven't changed over the last thousand years and actually longer. So what has changed? Well, it's really two things, our environment and our epigenetics. And they're intertwined. By environment, I'm referring to the chemicals in our environment, which includes food. The biggest culprit being sugar. Insulin resistance is what happens when people consume too much sugar and refined carbohydrates, which basically means people eating too much highly processed food. When insulin resistance develops, all sorts of bad things slowly start happening in the body. This includes obesity, and this includes the 13 obesity-related cancers, like colon cancer, like breast cancer, like pancreatic cancer, and more. And then insulin resistance is what drives heart attacks. It drives stroke, uh, vascular dementia, Alzheimer's disease, and fatty liver disease, even psychiatric conditions like depression. There's actually a study that showed this called the SMILES trial, and this was published a few years back. And essentially, uh, they used dietary interventions to treat depression, and they found that it worked better than drugs. And it's basically getting rid of the junk food and eating real food. So our food system is turning into the biggest killer on the planet, but many people can't accept that. They can't accept that reality. Or many people would rather turn a blind eye to it as they enjoy the unhealthy food that they're eating. Because of course, who wants to eat beans, eggs, and broccoli and fruit when they could eat a cheeseburger, fries, pizza, and cookies, which I love. For every 10% of your calories from ultra processed food, your risk of death goes up by a little bit more than 10%. About three fourths of the food that you see in a typical grocery store, including Whole Foods, is considered to be highly processed food. But if you eat mostly unprocessed food, meaning you eat food that is mostly recognizable from its original form, when it came from the earth? Well, if you're eating mostly that, you're not gonna have insulin resistance. But let's be real, it's not easy to quit eating the bad stuff because the tasty food is literally addictive. Now, if you look at the DSM-5 criteria for addiction, sugar actually meets the criteria for addiction. But being addicted to that tasty food isn't the only problem. The more insulin resistance that you have, the worse the cravings become. Why? Because the hunger and the cravings part of your brain located in your hypothalamus, well, guess what? That part of the brain can become resistant to insulin. So insulin tells your hypothalamus that you're full and it makes those cravings go away. But now that the hypothalamus is getting more and more resistant to the insulin, it's not working as good. Which means it becomes harder to stop eating the bad foods and it's no wonder that someone's not going to binge on a bag of walnuts, but they'll keep eating those cookies even when their stomach is full. Now, one study looked at ultra-processed food consumption versus unprocessed real food. And when people were allowed to eat whatever they wanted in a controlled environment, those who were given the ultra-processed food, on average, ate 500 more calories per day. So if people are addicted to it, how do they kick the cravings? Most people just can't do it. Their biology has been hijacked. Their brain is so hardwired at this point that they literally can't control it. That's what addiction is. They can't help themselves and they can't break this perpetual cycle. So if they can't help themselves, what's the solution? Motivation and willpower only get you so far, for most people anyway. 
Up until recently, there's been no other solution. But then came along something that tells the hypothalamus part of your brain, you know what, don't worry. No need for you to have those cravings. No need for you to feel hungry all the time. And that's why these new GLP-1 drugs, Ozempic, Wigovi, Manjaro, are called miracle drugs because they literally do what no medicine has been able to do before. And that is to get to the root cause of the problem, the root core of the biggest health crisis in America, insulin resistance. They interrupt the ongoing cycle in the hypothalamus. And that's why you see people not just losing weight with these drugs, but literally every marker of insulin resistance improves. It's not just one study proving this. Multiple studies show that all of the GLP-1 drugs, so Ozempic, Manjaro, they lower cholesterol levels, they lower triglyceride levels, they lower blood pressure, they improve fatty liver disease, and they even lower inflammation. There are many women reporting how their PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, has improved dramatically by taking these medications. For those of you who don't know, insulin resistance is highly correlated with PCOS, so it's not surprising that PCOS gets better with Ozempic and Manjaro. Nearly 70% of adults in the U.S. are either overweight or obese. So United States obesity rates have tripled over the last 60 years, and this parallels the rates of rise uh, with type 2 diabetes and with metabolic syndrome. Obesity-related cancers, not surprisingly, is on the rise as well, and we're seeing more and more younger people dying of colon cancer. Now, unless the food industry is going to all of a sudden say, you know what, we should prioritize the health of Americans over money in our bank accounts. Well, then the only real solution to fixing our biggest health crisis, insulin resistance, is to get more and more people on these drugs who need them.